Given a recent spring storm, today we're going off to look for damage, which was a word I didn't even realize my three-year-old didn't know. She knows different synonyms for the word damage, but when I said we were going out to scout for damage, she immediately asked, what does that word mean? That's always a fantastic opportunity that we seize to teach her a new word. Let's talk about all the synonyms you already know and add this new word to your vocabulary. I believe learning becomes so much easier for people when things are made tangible. And that is what I've always tried to do on this channel. A lot of people call me a good teacher. I think it's just I'm good at describing and drawing pictures and, and things like that because I'm a very image-based, touch-based, tactile-based person. When in grade school, topics like soil erosion and weathering are more advanced topics well beyond what a three-year-old should be learning. And it is advanced when it comes to sitting down at a desk. But when you can have your rubbers on and jump in the stream and splash in the water and look at the holes that have been dug and grab the soil in your hands, it all becomes so real and tangible. And my three-year-old toddler is able to grasp information well beyond her years just because it's made tangible. I think a good way we see this play out in real time all the time is as a math teacher. You know, I spent some time as a math teacher and you've probably heard it yourself. You've probably said it yourself. I'm just not a math person. and A lot of people do tend to struggle with math and I believe it's because math is the most difficult subject to experience. It's the least tangible. It's the least thing that you can hold on to and experience with your body and your eyes. And that just becomes a little bit harder to grasp for so many people. So my wife and I try as often as we can to give our children experiences. This is what's beautiful about the ranger guys, the fact that I can be in here with my two little girls. If my wife was here, we'd all be able to fit in with tons of room, snacks and whatever. I've got a dump full of buckets, tools, and we are off to get some soil for the garden. The soil is for our vegetable plants. If you haven't watched this video from this content right now, I recommend you go check it out. But we planted vegetables for the first time as a family just a few weeks ago and they are thriving. Some of them, a lot of them, are getting close to transplant. So we are going to start building a soil stock, richening it, adding the materials we need. We're going to be learning about that and building what we need. So this is a very, very exciting process for us. You got your shovel ready? Yeah. Nice. Got my shovel ready. Yeah. This is where we're, this is where we're going to scoop out some more. Yeah. Well, we're going to go back here. Looks like good ground back here. What's the matter? No, that's okay. That's just a little dirt. Look, it's fine. You brush it off. Brush them off. Brush them together. There you go. Think we can get some soil here, girls? Yeah. Yeah. Get the buckets. Okay. You gotta get one. You gotta get one bucket. Get one bucket, one shovel first, huh? Let's look for the cleanest ground we can find. Stuck here. Hand, yeah, I get your hand. Whoa. There you go. You're up. Okay, let's go back down near where the ground is a little bit more dry. You getting stuck too? <laughs> okay. Get it, Harry. Just down. Ooh, this looks like good stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, 
Yeah. You're fine. Relax. You're fine. Yes, you're fine. Bru Walk it off. Brush it in your coat. What? Brush your hands in your coat. No, I need gloves to wipe it. No, brush it in your coat. No. Do this. Do this. Look. Look at me. Do this. Wipe it in your coat. You gotta chill. Look at my big scoop. Whoa, that's a big scoop. Look at my big old scoop. You're really good. Oh, it's a big scoop. Look, I got a big one. Whoa, that is a good one. Top or off? Good, last one. Nice. Now do we throw another one? Nope, that's all our buckets we brought. Now maybe we go to Nan and Pops. Doing okay, sis? Good cookie? You want to go see Nan? And who else? Oh, these people? Okay. It's still pretty cold out, guys. As you can see, the girls have warm clothes. Everything uh, yeah. was kind of dusted over white with snow again this morning. Frost the last few nights. So we have a little bit before the plants get... Uh, Outside, we still have to build a greenhouse, a lot of work to do. But this is fun. It's my goal now, each day, I usually take the girls out every morning riding anyways, but each day we'll bring uh, five, six, eight buckets, whatever, and fill them up. So that way it's not such a chore to get 50 or 65 gallon buckets full of soil. No. We're finishing off with this video with some bonus footage for you guys, collecting some wood shavings at the local sawmill. Would you please leave a comment down below, take a guess at what these wood shavings are going to be used for. Along with leaving a comment, make sure you hit that like button, and if it's your first time here, please subscribe to watch the rest of my content. You know, I debated editing out the content of the girls crying just because you never know how people are going to react online, but I made the choice to leave it in because I wanted to say that it's just as important for your kids to go through that little bit of adversity as it is for them to learn properties like soil erosion and, and weathering. Parents usually have a really good idea of what their children can handle and why they're upset and crying. In this case, it was a little cold, it was a little damp, and they were a little uncomfortable. They would have rather been warm inside the house, but this was just a good little experience to help them build some character, to build some resistance to a little adversity.